the Vampire Wars, the reign of the Von Karsteins. When the vampires fled the wrath of Nagash, the majority went northwards into the lands of what would be known as the Old World. Once there, the seven surviving vampire lords all went on their own separate journeys. One went to the far east, perhaps to the distant lands of Cathay, whilst another disappeared into the howling northern waste. The last four all stayed within different parts of the old world. Queen Neferata took residence in a large peak within the World's Edge Mountain that was known by the dwarves as the Silver Pinnacle, where she still resides today as the leader of the Lahmian bloodline. The Honorable Aborash fled to the northern regions of the Old World, where it is said that the Vampire Lord defeated and drunk the blood of a mighty dragon, removing the loathsome curse of blood consumption. With the curse lifted, Aborash formed the first of the Blood Dragon Bloodline. The scholarly Vasora flung himself to all corners of the old world where he still travels to this very day, gathering as much knowledge of necromancy as he possibly can in hopes of resurrecting his fallen master. It was during this time that he also founded the Necrarch Bloodline. The cunning Ushura founded the Strigoi Bloodline after he helped a necromancer named Kadon established the ancient human kingdom of Strigos and its capital city of Murkain, long before the founding of the Empire. But perhaps the greatest and most dangerous of the bloodlines to have ever plagued the human realms in the old world is one that started with one man and his ambition grown so great that it had the potential to topple an entire empire. Vashanesh eventually returned to life as Nagash promised, and he spent the next few centuries testing the limits of the ring. He set about mastering certain magical arts to make the ring his slave rather than his master. Eventually, Vashanesh's ambitious nature led him on a dark path that would haunt the lands of Sylvania for the rest of eternity. The Madness of Otto von Drach, 1797-2000 IC. It all began on a storm-lashed night when Otto von Drach, the last of the mad von Drach counts, lay on his deathbed within the capital of Drachenhof, cursing the gods that he was without a male heir to continue his legacy. Otto was a cruel, gluttonous and selfish man who delighted on the plight of others and whose authority over the land was met with little respect and less love by both commoners and nobility alike. While on his deathbed, the lands of Sylvania were seething with civil strife. As his family awaited his final breath, Otto swore to all the gods that he would rather marry his only daughter Isabella to a demon rather than to let his hated brother Leopold inherit the throne. The dying count refused all those that requested her hand in marriage, for in his heart he despised them all. And so it was that Isabella von Drach knelt at her father's deathbed, 
still without a husband and child to carry on the family estate. As if a dark power had answered the mad count's plea, outside the castle, thunder rumbled and lightning split the darkness. Victor Gutmann, the aged priest of Sigma who had been called to shrive the old count, fainted instantly. Then, from out of the storm, came the sound of wheels and pounding hooves. A dark coach pulled by four mighty black steeds stopped outside the keep. In the ensuing silence, someone knocked on the door. A trembling servant introduced an unknown noble to the Count. The stranger introduced himself to the dying Count and his daughter with respect, completely ignoring Leopold and only answering his questions regarding his origins by stating his name as Vlad von Karstein the eldest of the von Karstein family, one he didn't expect Leopold to know. Leopold protested, but the stranger silenced him, stating he had come only to offer his services to the current Count von Drac, being in the vicinity whilst travelling to a wedding. Completely oblivious to his true intentions, Otto's face lit up, and he proposed the stranger to become the husband of his daughter, thus effectively removing Leopold's claim to the title of Count. Vlad then turned to Isabella, claiming that at some point of the ceremony it was usual for the bride to accept. Isabella, wanting the power she sensed in Vlad, accepted but asked him in a whisper for a token of his love. Vlad then faced Leopold and tore his heart out of his chest with his bare hands before tossing him out of a window. He then presented Isabella the heart of her now dead uncle, upon which she coldly stated that she had no use for it, seeing as it no longer beated. The priest Gutmann was revived from his swoon and brought to the chambers of Otto, where the marriage ceremony was performed before the dying Count's bed. Almost as soon as the last of the ritual words were spoken, Otto von Drac passed away, leaving his daughter and his entire estate in the charge of Vlad von Kasta. Thus the wedding ceremony had ended, and the two lovers were together ever since. Vlad von Karstein had married Isabella for power, and used his charm to control her at times. To their mutual surprise, what had started as a marriage of convenience swiftly blossomed into true love and the pair had become confidants in one another and were all but inseparable. Isabella begged Vlad to give her the blood kiss so they could be together for eternity. But Vlad was aware to the downsides of vampirism and loved her too much to subject her to that. Scant days later, Word reached Drakenhof that Isabella had fallen sick with an incurable illness. One of the physicians who tended her claimed her heart had stopped. The new count insisted this was not so. He dismissed the learned doctors, claiming he would care for her with his own hands. Three days later, she appeared in front of her folk saying she was fully recovered. She was ever afterwards pale and wan, however, and never left her chambers save by moonlight. Several months following Vlad's coronation, dark events had begun taking place across the lands, 
Young men and women from neighboring villages began disappearing overnight. Sightings of the dead stirring beneath their graves began to pop up within every cemetery across Sylvania. For whatever reason, these walking dead only attack those that were defying the Count's authority. Those dissidents that had escaped them were found dead by strange accidents. All over Sylvania, these dark events occurred regularly, with only those who swore their allegiance to Vlad von Karstein seemingly immune to the horrific purge. Within ten years, Vlad was more firmly in control of unruly Sylvania than any other ruler beforehand. Some remarked that so great was Vlad's achievement that he should in fact sit upon the imperial throne. To his naive subjects, the von Karsteins were, after all, an ancient family that could trace their lineage back to the founding of the empire. Generations later, Vlad and Isabella still presided over the lands of Sylvania, unchanged. At first, few paid attention to their longevity. The lives of the peasants had always been squalid and short, and so they paid little heed. Although it was the longer living nobility that began to notice this strange vitality, the revelation came about when the oldest woman in Drakenhof remarked how her great-grandmother was still a girl when Vlad von Karstein came into power. In time, word began to spread, leading to even the most dull-witted peasant realizing something was odd. Witch hunters by the dozen began to flock to the lands of Sylvania, hunting down evil like hounds upon a hare. Yet, of those that tried to investigate the von Karstein family, none had ever returned. <laughs>